Hey guys, Jessica Shire here and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. So I have something really fun to share with you today. And I did one of these power pack hops a little while ago. I'll link to that video down below in the description box along with many other fun things like the next person in the power pack hop and all the products that I use are listed below also. When Amanda from Pear Blossom Press asked if I wanted to join in on another power pack hop, I immediately jumped on that opportunity because these are so much fun and I just already had an idea. <laughs> so I, she, I don't know how she knows, but she knows. So today I'm going to be working with the Art Impressions Catastrophe set. And this set has a cute little cat. He has a cone, cone of shame. And I thought it would be fun to make that cone light up. I got the idea because in the stamp set, there's also a, a sentiment stamp that says I'm a lamp. I thought it was perfect. <laughs> so everything I'm going to be using today is a large hexagon die from Art Impressions, um, along with that catastrophe, catastrophe set. And of course, the power pack kit from Pear Blossom Press, along with some different papers and Prismacolor pencils to color in that cat, which I'm going to start with first. For my coloring, I went ahead and I stamped the cat using the Gina K Amalgam ink onto the largest Art Impressions hexagon die. And I love this shape. I just think it is so unique. It's such a fun hexagon shape. It's a little different than most of the hexagons that you see out there. So the Prismacolor pencils that I'm going to be using are mainly the French grays. It's kind of a brown gray but I'm going to be using several different of those colored pencils in that category, along with a cool gray and a pink for his little ear. So I'm going to work these pencils like I do with Copic markers using the darkest color first and then fading out to the lightest. Also on the packaging of the stamp set, the cat is gray. He's more of a cool gray color. But since I like using gray, I thought I would just stick with that kind of color scheme for him. I am coloring this cat on Nina 80 pound cardstock. It's a really smooth cardstock, so it doesn't allow a lot of layering with colored pencils. It doesn't have any tooth to it. But you can get a really good basic coloring using Prismacolor pencils and Nina cardstock. So I couldn't have my cat just floating in the air or in his hexagon. So I thought I would use a couple of the darker green colors. This is grass green and I think I have an olive green too for some shading, which is kind of a more of a brown green. And I'm gonna use that to ground the cat, but I'm just having some fun. This cat is super cute with his little Kona shame. So like I said before, I do have the link for my first light up card that I use the power packs with and that'll be down below. That card was a real challenge because it was clear and it was see-through card and if you haven't heard anything about power packs or not really sure exactly what what Pear Blossom Press has to offer I would definitely go to her website Amanda's website Pear Blossom Press and check out all of the information there. She has templates, she has quick tips, troubleshooting uh, guides, a lot of different things that will help make your own light of cards. And you can also purchase the power packs there. So once I was done with the coloring, I'm, I actually add a little bit more coloring later on, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and take two pieces of craft foam. This is just black craft foam that I bought at Michael's and I cut it with the same hexagon die, that really large die. And I'm going to glue those together with Thermo Whip Ultra Bond glue and let that sit underneath an acrylic block to dry. I probably used a little too much glue. but <laughs> So once it was pretty much dry, I'm going to go ahead and put that onto a stamp platform or stamp positioning tool. And I'm going to layer the colored piece with the cat over the top. And then I can line up that same cat stamp, 
close the lid of my stamp platform, remove the colored piece because I don't need that right now. And I'm going to use some black ink to stamp on that craft foam and then onto another piece of black cardstock that is cut with the same hexagon die. And this is going to give me my basic outline of where the cat is because I want to cut through that craft foam and have the light show through right where that cone is. So he is actually going to be a lamp. I'm making his dreams come true right now. I use a pencil to trace onto the black cardstock. That way I could see that a little bit better before the ink dried. But the fun foam is pretty easy to see. And I'm just going to use some scissors to start my cutting and then trim out all the little pieces with a craft knife. It just gives me a bit of a better edge, especially since my craft foam wasn't actually completely dried all the way through. So I had to keep readjusting it. I just, I was, I didn't have time <laughs> to wait for that craft foam to dry. I put a lot of glue on it, like I said. So for my button for the front of the card, it's going to be the I'm a lamp stamp that I heat embossed with alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe onto some dull pink Simon Says Stamp cardstock and then cut out with a little heart die. And I think I got these heart dies at Michael's but it was just whatever I could find to fit that little sentiment stamp. And I'm gonna kind of carry on the heart thing a little bit later at the end with a couple of embellishments. So going back to the craft foam hexagon, I placed everything so that I could figure out where I wanted the power pack to go. And then I outlined that power pack onto that foam with a pencil. And I just kind of increased it around the edges so that it was just a rectangle. And I'm going to cut that out also using scissors. So this gives me an area where the power pack will sit. So I'm just making sure everything is lining up. I'm going to trace my shapes that I just cut out from that craft foam piece onto that black cardstock hexagon. So using some strong double-sided adhesive, I put that on the back of the power pack and then I can stick that onto that designated rectangle area that I made for myself. That way I knew where that power pack is going to go. You can also see the outline of the cat's cone of shame with a pencil just very faintly and that is where my light will go. I went ahead and I situated the lights so that the longer side is at the top. That's the positive and that pointy piece is at the negative. That just kind of helps line up those points of the power pack. You can see where those say plus and negative. I want the plus to go to the plus and the negative to go to the negative to make my circuit. The lights already have some adhesive on them. So I just take off that backing. I'm going to use a bone folder to kind of burnish that down to make sure it's real. It's stuck really well to that cardstock. I also draw out a quick little diagram on where I'm going to put my tape with a pencil. It's kind of faint. You can't really see it. And that's just so that it helps me line everything up while I'm trying to stick down the copper tape. I always have better luck when I cover the entire point of that power pack, those little rectangles on the sides with copper tape. I always try to keep the copper tape intact just to have a better connection. I've heard that you can just tear the copper tape without any issues and kind of overlap it to make a connection. I do actually end up tearing the copper tape at the end and kind of patching it together and it still works. So I guess that is true. So for my negative side, I'm going to do the same thing, covering that entire silver rectangle on the side. That's where the, the negative piece is. That's where the negative side is. And I'm going to run that down just slightly, making sure it doesn't touch the battery or anything. I'm going to bring that right over to that point of the light that has the negative emblem on it. And that end was a little bit shoddy, so I added another piece of copper tape over the top just to make sure my connection was really good. 
and then I can burnish everything down. That's kind of a key point. I take my bone folder again and really push down. The light wasn't working quite yet. I didn't have a good enough connection on some of those points where the tape broke or it overlapped. So I really burnished those down good. So now my light turns on and I can go ahead and start with the rest of this card. So using a Nina 110 pound solar white card base, that's top fold, I'm going to adhere a piece of Simon Stamp soft navy cardstock. I layered over the top a piece of, uh, this is a pattern paper from, I think it's Pebbles, it's, warm, it's the warm and cozy pattern paper pack. So being extra careful with my circuit, I'm gonna flip that piece over, that black cardstock piece over, and add some of that heavy duty double stick tape on the back so I can stick it onto the card. And I didn't want to use my ATG because that requires a lot of pressure to push that tape down and I didn't want to disrupt my circuit at all. So this worked but I didn't check my orientation. So when I go to lay the cat piece over the top, it doesn't, it doesn't line up. It's crooked, way crooked. <laughs> so luckily I was able to take my bone folder cause it's super slim and kind of wedge it underneath that black cardstock piece with the circuit and pry it up just slightly. I didn't really push down on it a lot. So the tape didn't really have time to stick and that rarely ever happens to me that I can actually pull something up after sticking it down and not tear anything or ruin it so <laughs> I was holding my breath because I could not figure out a way to make that crooked cat orientation work so once I got it down the correct way and double check to make sure the lights still work, added a bit more adhesive to help out the pieces that I ruined, I can adhere the craft foam piece over the top. And this has all of those shapes that I cut out for these components. So you can see the power pack there and then the light at the top. And luckily the liquid adhesive didn't disrupt anything. I haven't had any issues with it after it was dried or anything, it still works perfectly. I didn't think about that until after I did it. So once I adhered the cat piece over the top, I can press to see where I want my little heart piece to go. This is a little button that make the light that makes the light work. I just love how that little cone of shame lights up. I think it's so funny. And I also take some of the sentiments that I had already pre-stamped and cut with some Simon Says Stamp cardstock. And the first sentiment is also in the Art Impressions set. And the second sentiment that says that nip life though, it's kind of got a little, little slang to it, is from the Ink Road and that's the, and that's part of the Per Baby set. I'm gonna use another sentiment from that set and the inside of the card too, which I'll show you in just a moment. In the beginning of the video, you probably saw that I used some Gina K Amalgam ink on vellum and stamp just the the cone of shame part of the stamp. And Gina K Amalgam Ink does work on porous surfaces. It just needs to be heat set. I didn't heat set the I didn't heat set this though. I let it just sit and dry before I cut it out or anything. And this worked perfectly. It dried just fine and I have this cute little vellum cone of shame piece to put over that cat. And it just kind of separates that cone of shame from the rest of the white cardstock on this. <laughs> I also added a little bit of dark gray pencil coloring to those little, the fasteners for the cone, I guess. And that's where also where I adhered that glue on the backside. That way you don't see the glue at all. So it doesn't show through because of that coloring. I also added some hearts. Uh, these are from Doodlebug. They are such a pastel tone. I don't know if they work with the rest of the card, but I'm gonna go with it. And I'll have all of the inks I used, all the products I used, including the power packs. Everything is linked down below in the description box. There is some affiliate links, so I do get a little bit of a commission off of those if you decide to use them. 
at no extra cost to you. And as a final step, I decided to do some clouds, kind of doing the same sketchy kind of technique with a colored pencil as I did with that the grass down below. But here's the front of the card, and I think these are so fun. You can put on the inside too uh, to push the I'm a lamp part, and that way your recipient knows to push that to make the card light up. Or if you have one of those interactive stamp sets that have the push, pull, all those different sayings that are kind of helpful for when you make interactive cards, that would be perfect also to add a, like a little push stamp there. I just kind of giggled to myself the entire time because I just thought, I don't know if it's my sense of humor, but I thought this was hilarious. Hopefully somebody else has the same kind of uh, humor as I do. I'm always looking for new ways to make some interactive cards using these power packs. So leave me some suggestions down below. And of course, the next person in the power pack hop is linked also in the description box and on my blog. So go ahead and click that next person to see some more light up card inspiration. All right, you guys, that is it for me. Thank you so much for joining me today. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I appreciate you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Meh, meh.